In 2006, a 27-year-old medical student walked into a bar and was never seen again. Since then, nobody knows what happened to Brian or where he is now. Brian Schaefer was born in 1979 in Pickerington, Ohio, a suburb of Columbus. He graduated from Ohio State University with a degree in microbiology. Following that, Brian Schaefer began studies at the Ohio State University College of Medicine in 2004. In 2006, during his second year there, his mother died. Brian was very close with his mother, so her death was a big psychological shock for him. At the time of his disappearance, Brian was dating another medical student, Alexis Wagoner. His friends and family believed that he would be making a proposal to her later that year, most likely on a trip to Miami that they had planned to take very shortly. On March 31st, classes at OSU ended for spring break the next week. Schaefer celebrated the occasion by going out with his father for dinner at a local steakhouse. Although Schaefer had plans to go out with his friends later that day, his father noted that he was super tired from putting in all-nighters for all final exams earlier in the week. Nevertheless, he still went out with his friend, William Clint Florence. At 9 p.m., Schaefer met Florence at the Ugly Tuna Saluna, a bar on High Street in downtown Columbus. An hour later, Schaefer called his girlfriend, who had returned to her home in Toledo, Ohio, to visit her parents before she and Schaefer were due to fly to Miami. After that, Schaefer and Florence went bar hopping, visiting several other establishments and working their way down to the Arena District. At each stop, they each had one shot of hard liquor, according to Florence. After midnight, Schaefer and Florence met Meredith Reed, a friend of Florence in a bar called The Short North. Reed then gave them a ride back to the Ugly Tuna Saluna, where they had started that night and joined them there for another round. While the three of them were there, Schaefer separated from his friends and started talking to two women, Brighton Zatko and Amber Ruick. At 1.57 a.m., Brian can be seen just off camera next to the escalators. That would be the last time he would be ever seen again. As the late evening was drawing to a close, Florence and Reed attempted to find Schaefer, repeatedly calling him on his phone. When the bar closed at 2 a.m., they left and waited for Brian outside the bar. When they didn't see him exiting, they assumed that he went back to his apartment without telling them. So they both went home as well. After all, his apartment was located just a few blocks away from the bar. Throughout the weekend, with Brian still missing, his father and girlfriend repeatedly called him, but he didn't answer. The following Monday, he missed his morning flight to Miami that he had planned to take with his girlfriend. He was subsequently reported missing to the Columbus police. When the police began their investigation, they initially opted to focus on the surveillance cameras at the bar and at the nearby establishments. As luck would have it, the city of Columbus had the most CCTV cameras of any other city in Ohio. It had more cameras than Cleveland, Toledo, and Cincinnati combined. The police noticed that Schaefer entered the bar at 1.15 a.m. Later on, he was on camera outside the bar at 1.55 a.m., while briefly talking to the two women before moving off camera in the direction of the bar in an attempt to re-enter. What's interesting is that the camera didn't record him leaving shortly after the bar had closed, and so that was the last time he was ever seen on camera. When the police began looking at the surveillance footage closer, they were able to account for everyone entering and leaving except Brian Schaefer. Police searched the surrounding area with special police dogs and also asked residents and passerby if they had seen Brian there. They even got the city's permission to enter the sewage system, but they didn't find anything. The bar had only one official exit, but there was also another exit, one that led to a construction site. The main problem that the police faced with the investigation was the lack of clues. There were absolutely no hints that a criminal element was somehow involved. 
his nearby apartment wasn't broken into or otherwise unlawfully accessed. His bank account and credit cards were not touched. His car remained parked exactly where he'd left it on that fateful night. Next, detectives began talking to people closest to Brian. They administered polygraph tests to his father, his friend, Florence and Meredith Reed. Brian's father and Meredith both passed their tests, while his friend Florence refused to take it. In fact, as soon as the detectives started asking his friends and family questions, Florence got a lawyer and stopped cooperating with the law enforcement altogether. The two women that Brian was seen speaking with outside the bar were also identified, but they later said no one had asked them to take a polygraph. Brian's disappearance captured local, state, as well as national news headlines. In fact, during one of the concerts performed by Pearl Jam, a popular US rock band and one of Schaefer's favorite bands, the main singer Eddie Vedder appealed to the public for any clues or tips about Brian Schaefer's disappearance and urged anyone who might know something to come forward to the police. But, uh, dead serious uh, last April, this last April, uh, a young man named Brian Schaefer kind of went missing. He's, uh, he looks like he's in his 20s, he's a uh, 6'2", real handsome guy, and uh, he's got a Pearl Jam tattoo on his upper right arm. School. Uh, you may have heard about this already. If you, if you have, I apologize, but I, I don't think it would do any harm to uh, to bring it again to everybody's attention. If you have, if you look into this, uh, uh, it's out there. Uh, FindBrianSchaefer.com. That's his name, Brian Schaefer. And, uh, it feels like he's one of our own. And, uh, if you have any information. Uh, there is a reward, but you can also remain anonymous by calling uh, Crime Stoppers Ohio. Uh, there's information on NBC4. And uh, like I said, he's, uh, he's one of us. And, uh, DJ, yeah! and uh, we miss him here tonight. And uh, hopefully we can have a happy ending to this. If you have any information or idea, your friends. So what exactly happened to Brian? As time went on, the case gained popularity on the news and social media, mostly due to the fact that his disappearance was so bizarre, it was almost as though he had just vanished into thin air. And so let's discuss some of the theories as to what may have happened to Brian Schaefer on that fateful night. The first theory is that Brian may have left voluntarily to start a new life. He had recently lost his mother, who he was very close with, so that could have prompted him to start over somewhere else. However, Brian still had a great relationship with his father and a caring girlfriend, but maybe that wasn't enough to offset the pain of losing a dear mother. It's hard to believe this theory, mainly because Brian had a promising future ahead of him, and furthermore, he actually planned to propose to his longtime girlfriend on their Miami trip. The second theory is that Brian left the bar via the other exit that led to the construction site. He may have been too drunk to notice it and not realizing where that particular exit led may have inadvertently exited there and either fell to his death or simply got stuck inside some unfinished structure. We went over and checked the, uh, the movie theater that was, you know, across the way, checked out, you know, the, the entire building from top to bottom to try to figure out if he could have went, you know, in a different yeah. direction. And then the basic indication right now is somehow he got down into the construction area and most likely got exited out of there. But again, we don't have anything that's on video to support that. It's just speculation at this time. What's interesting is that the police department got permission from the city to inspect the sewage system, but they didn't find anything of value. The third theory is that Brian's disappearance wasn't a result of some accident, but may have happened deliberately. While most of Brian's friends passed the polygraph, his best friend Florence, with whom he went bar hopping that night, flat out refused to take the lie detector test, which was very suspicious. 
What's more suspicious is that shortly after Brian's mysterious disappearance, Florence hired an attorney and refused any and all cooperation with the police. While that may indeed seem extremely suspicious, he's definitely within his legal right to do so, and the fact that the police didn't arrest him meant that they didn't have sufficient motive or evidence to do so. And that pretty much sums up the list of theories as to how or why Brian may have disappeared. If you ask me, my hunch tells me that Brian may have been drunk and taken the wrong exit and either fell to his death at the construction site or just got stuck somewhere. I also don't feel that Brian ran away to start a new life. Even though the loss of his mother hit him particularly hard, he still had a very solid relationship with his father, so I can't imagine he'd ever severed that. Unless there's a strong motive that his best friend Florence is somehow involved, I believe that there was something accidental. In fact, somehow in my mind, this case resembles the case of a young British man who fell into a garbage can in the UK and was never seen again. To this day, this case is unsolved and remains one of the most bizarre disappearances ever. In the subsequent years, there have been various sightings of Brian all over the world, but unfortunately, none of them proved useful either. In September 2008, another tragic event took place. During a heavy windstorm, Randy Schaefer, Brian's dad, was out in the yard of his Baltimore home clearing debris. A branch flew off from a nearby tree and fatally struck him. Neighbors found his body the next morning. So what do you guys think really happened to Brian Schaefer that fateful night? How do you think he really disappeared? I would love to hear your theories and thoughts in the comment area below. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.